Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's town hall for students and families. We had a wonderful weekend of graduation celebrations, and now we're looking forward to the summer sessions and the upcoming academic year. I'm joined today by Dr. Karen Olmsted, SU's Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, and by Dr. Dane Faust, our Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Eli Maudlin, my chief of staff, is also here, and he'll be helping us with the questions that you've sent in. I want to start by thanking you for choosing Salisbury University. Whether this will be your first year with us, or you're going into your second, third, or fourth, or even your fifth year, we are happy that you chose to be a seagull. I also want you to know that we are committed to providing you the highest quality education and university experience possible whether you're an undergraduate, a master's student, or a doctoral student. And we can only do that if you are healthy and safe. I know that at times during the pandemic, it's felt like we might have been overly cautious or restrictive, but you should know that we've always followed the advice and guidance of local, state, federal health officials with collaboration from science experts right here on our campus, to provide the best SU experience that we possibly could. I can't tell you how excited we are to engage in a more normal living and learning experience in the fall. One of our best tools assisting us to get back to a sense of normal is the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm sure that most of you are aware that the vaccine is required for all University System of Maryland students and employees that includes SU, in order to return for the fall. Once a student is fully vaccinated, they will need to get a return test, or in the case of new students, an initial test. That COVID test needs to take place on campus sometime between June 1st and August 29th. Once a student or employee gets that test, fully vaccinated students are not required to test again in 2021 unless they are experiencing COVID-like symptoms or otherwise asked to test by a healthcare professional. Now, in line with state and federal law, exemptions to the vaccine requirement will be made on the basis of medical or religious grounds. If you would like to request an exemption, please email your request to campushealth at salisbury.edu with the subject line exemption and they will help you with the process. If you're not vaccinated for any reason, you will need to test twice per week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Twice weekly testing applies to all students and employees who have received exemptions from the vaccine requirement as well. Now, all of these policies apply to students and employees who need access to campus. If you're not coming to campus at all, you don't need to worry about testing and the vaccine is not required, but we still encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Similar policies apply at USM regional centers at Shady Grove, Hagerstown, and Southern Maryland and at our satellite sites. Please check your email for information on how testing and vaccine compliance are being managed at SU programs at those educational centers. This has been a very challenging year, but our students have met and exceeded what's been asked of them. You have shown an incredible amount of courage and resilience, and I know we'll continue to thrive together. I'll now turn the briefing over to SU's provost, Dr. Karen Olmsted. Thank you, Dr. White. In my role as provost, I serve as the university's chief academic officer, and it's been an absolute privilege to work with faculty and students to continue to provide the high quality education that you've come to expect from SU, even during these unexpected times. Students, parents, and families, I wanna echo the president's words and let you know how proud we are of you for your resilience and your commitment to your education. We remain committed to providing outstanding courses, labs, clinical experiences, internships, and other learning experiences, whether in a traditional format 
or hybrid or remote setting. And we continue to focus on student development and support outside of the classroom, including student research, competitions, tutoring, advising, office hours, writing support, and other development experiences. In fact, in the past month, it's been, we've just been filled with culminating events of many of these activities, including our nationally recognized sales and entrepreneurship competitions, our annual research conference, honors award ceremonies, and many recitals and performances. During the last year, some of you took all of your courses in a virtual setting. Some of you took a hybrid approach with both in-person and virtual learning, and many of you fully returned to campus and followed the precautions that were put in place to keep you safe. Regardless of how you learned, your professors and support staff worked hard to give you a great experience. That said, we recognize that in many programs, the conversations and collaborations between students and faculty and staff that have been the hallmark of an SU education are better delivered in person. So I'm happy to say that we have, we'll have students back on campus this summer, and in the fall semester, 80 to 85 percent of our instruction will be in person. That means there will, that there will be continue to be opportunities for students to learn in a virtual environment, but in large part, our campus and classrooms will much more closely resemble our pre-pandemic conditions. If you have specific questions about a class, about course modalities, or anything else in the academic realm, please email provost at salisbury.edu. Thank you, Dr. White. Thanks, Dr. Olmsted. You know, my office in Holloway Hall faces the Holloway Hall lawn. And one of the reasons that I love my office location is that I can look out of my window and see the vibrant activities of our campus community. My favorite is probably our Quidditch team that practices out in front of my office. That's what SU is all about. You come here for a great education, but you also get involved with sports and intramurals, clubs, social groups, and other activities on campus. Many alums have made lifelong friends or even met their spouse at SU. And I know that we're all excited to bring that element of student life back to campus. Dr. Dane Faust is here to talk about student activities and other elements of student life for the fall. Dane? Thank you, Dr. White. As you said, we're really excited to be back for a more robust level of programming for our students in the fall. But I have to say that our Student Government Association, the Office of Student Activities, Housing and Residence Life, and others did a great job of engaging our students in virtual and safe in-person activities over the last year. And now that we have a safe and effective vaccine, I'm excited for our students to get to do even more on and off campus. Housing and residence life is preparing for a near full reopening with some space set aside for quarantine and isolation if necessary. Our award-winning dining services is making way for more students and opening up stations that have been closed. Student organizations are busy planning fun and engaging welcome back events and activities for our new and returning students. And I'm really excited for this place to come alive in the fall. There are some, some of the things that I wanted to note here with regard to the vaccine. In addition to being required to test twice a week, students who are not fully vaccinated and do not have a medical or religious exemption on file will not be permitted to live in multiple occupancy units, meaning they can't have a roommate and they'll need to live in a single, most likely Dogwood Village. Additionally, students without the vaccine or an exemption will also be restricted from participating in intercollegiate athletics, club sports, intramurals. This is why we're encouraging all students to get vaccinated on or before July 6th. That will give you enough time to get fully vaccinated before the start of the fall semester. Students who are found not to be in compliance with campus expectations could find themselves dealing with student conduct concerns. So again, please get, get vaccinated or receive the exemption. 
I imagine the university may request students to wear masks in the fall semester, at least under certain circumstances. Guidance is rapidly changing and we are working closely with the USM and state and federal offices for further clarification. I also encourage you not to jump to conclusions if you see someone wearing a mask. There may be good reason to stay masked even if you've received a vaccine. We also recognize that this can be an anxious and unnerving time for some students. And I want to ensure you that in addition to student health services and campus health, we're investing in additional resources to ensure that your transition to or back to campus is as smooth as possible. And that you have all the support you, that you need to be successful. Again, I wanna thank you for, all, for choosing Salisbury University and look forward to seeing you back in August. Thanks, Dr. Faust. Okay, please remember to send any questions that you have to stayinformed at salisbury.edu. Eli Maudlin, what are people asking about today? Thank you, Dr. White. The first question is regarding masks. And the question is simply, what are the university's mask policies? Currently, at this time, masks are required anytime you're indoors except if you are in a private room, a dorm room, uh, a private workspace, or if you're eating in a designated eating area. Now, the university is going to continue to monitor um, vaccination levels among uh, members of the campus community and the surrounding area. So those uh, may be relaxed in the future, but for now, uh, pretty much anytime you're indoors, masks are required. Thank you, Dr. White. This person asks, according to the CDC, they're still learning how well vaccines prevent someone from spreading the virus that causes COVID-19 to others. Why is the school enforcing us to get the vaccine if there is no safety guaranteed? Well, there's no absolute guarantee uh, to, your, to anyone's safety, but uh, the CDC and uh, other health agencies have said without equivocation that the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is through vaccination. Now, um, there are uh, readily available and very safe uh, vaccines. Uh, so uh, we strongly encourage you to get vaccinated. We want our students to have the opportunity to go back in uh, to the in-person college experience that they're used to and we're known for. And uh, we want to do that safely. So the vaccine gives us the best opportunity to do that. Dr. White, how does a student apply for the vaccine exemption? It's pretty easy. Send an email to campushealth at salisbury.edu. Uh, put exemption uh, in the subject line and the people at Campus Health will be in touch with you to uh, show you how to fill out that paperwork. A, a follow-up to that, how are exemptions going to be handled as it relates to the vaccine exemption? Well, we have had required vaccines at Salisbury and every uh, Maryland university for a long time. And so we also have the processes uh, for getting exemptions. They've always been in place. So student uh, health services handles these in uh, compliance with state and uh, federal law. Um, so uh, the process for vaccine exemptions uh, or in, and accommodations is very well known. Thank you, Dr. White. Uh, what happens if someone does not receive that exemption? Well, that's a good question. Um, exemptions are limited and they do require documentation. So if a student does not receive uh, an exemption and is not uh, vaccinated, then there will be restrictions uh, to what they can do on campus. Uh, so high risk activities will be extremely limited. For example, uh, students who are not vaccinated and don't re receive an exemption will not have access to multi, uh, multiple occupancy rooms. You won't be able to have a roommate. Uh, you won't be able to participate in intercollegiate athletics or club sports or intramurals. Um, you won't be able, you will have to test on, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, twice a week, uh, and you'll have to complete the symptom screening every, every day uh, if you want to maintain campus access. 
The university health team is looking at other high-risk activities uh, that unvaccinated students without an exemption might be restricted from participating. Thank you, Dr. White. Another question about those exemptions. Is there a deadline to submit that exemption form? There is not a specific deadline, but I strongly encourage you to get uh, your request for an exemption in as soon as possible. So Dr. White, earlier you talked about a time frame for students to get their return test or their initial test. When do they need to get tested by? What's the last test date? So students are coming back to campus or coming to campus at a variety of times, either over the summer for summer semester or for the fall semester. As long as you get your return test uh, by um, August 29th, uh, you'll be fine. So sometime between June 1st and August 29th, uh, that's uh, when you need to get your test. Um, for vaccinated students who have completed the, the consent form in Gullnet, uh, they're only required to test once uh, in uh, 2021, as long as it takes place between those two dates, June 1st to August 29th. Uh, unvaccinated students will be required to test twice per week uh, as soon as they come back to campus. Thank you, Dr. White. Um, you just talked about in a, in a previous answer, the daily symptom monitoring, the symptom screening that we use the app for, will that be required in the fall? Uh, daily symptom monitoring is recommended for everybody just to, to keep an eye on your own uh, personal health, but it's only required for those who are not vaccinated. What happens if a student is if a student misses their test. So you talked about needing to test on Tuesday, Thursday. What happens if a student or employee misses their Tuesday or Thursday test? Yeah, if a student or an employee misses uh, a required test, then they fall out of compliance. And this means they will lose access to campus. Uh, they lose access to campus buildings and facilities. Uh, their goal card will be turned off um, and uh, that's not only for on-campus use, it's also for off-campus use. They'll also lose access to the campus Wi-Fi network. Um, if the person lives on campus, housing will work with them to, on living arrangements and meals, but this is something you just don't want to have happen. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is to get vaccinated, uh, but if you're not vaccinated, you will have to complete your testing every Tuesday and every Thursday. Thanks, Dr. White. Say someone has a medical or religious exemption, are they permitted access to campus? Yes, of course. So um, with uh, the exemption, uh, you are granted an accommodation so that uh, you can uh, have access to campus facilities uh, and uh, re the normal educational experience. So um, you'll still need to test twice a week, but uh, you'll have that exemption and you'll be given an accommodation. Dr. White, is the COVID vaccine required for graduate students that might only be coming to campus once a week? Uh, yes. Uh, if you are a graduate student and you're only coming to campus uh, once a week, then um, you should uh, contact uh, Campus Health. Send an email to uh, campushealth at Salisbury. Uh, edu and we'll work with you on the schedule of your test. This is a longer question. Um, as all students are required to get vaccinated, and this person had already been fully vaccinated through the state of Maryland off campus, how will they be able to provide their proof of vaccination to the school? So basically, if someone is fully vaccinated, how do they provide that information to SU? So the most important thing for you to do is to make sure that you have completed the consent form in Gullnet. Uh, that allows us to get your vaccine, vaccine information uh, from CRISP, uh, which is the Chesapeake Regional Health Information Exchange. Um, so uh, that's the most important thing to do. Uh, at a certain point, we're going to send a message uh, to everyone for whom we don't have a vaccine record to make sure that those who have been vaccinated are in the correct uh, testing group. And if there are any uh, people who haven't been accounted for, we'll correct it at that time. 
Uh, Dr. White, with Governor Hogan's recent announcements, will we still be requiring masks on campus? Yes, our indoor um, mask requirement remains in place. Uh, we have increased seating capacities for uh, classrooms and other venues on campus. So uh, yes, for now, the mask requirement indoors re remains in place. Okay, um, so this is a combination of questions, but say someone is not vaccinated, but they do or do not have an exemption on file and they have to test twice a week. Where does that testing need to be done? Can it be done at a private doctor or pharmacy? And can it be a PCR or rapid test? So um, to maintain campus clearance at the Salisbury campus, all students and employees will need to receive an SU administered COVID-19 test. Um, this is because uh, our access to campus is dependent on you taking a test with us. It sometimes takes a long time if you get a test off campus for us to get that information through CRISP or, or another way. And so the, there would be a delay, sometimes a long delay in getting your campus access turned back on. So uh, that's why we require everybody to get their COVID tests on campus uh, administered by SU. If, if this is a challenge for you, if there's some special reason why this can't be done, uh, send email to Campus Health. We'll see if we can work it out. But really, the best way to do it is to get an SU administered test. It's free. Dr. White, this is a very similar question to the one that you answered a bit earlier. But if someone is only coming on campus once a week, are they still required to get tested twice a week, assuming that they're not vaccinated? Well, if, if you're not vaccinated and, then, and you don't have an exemption, but are only coming to campus once a week, uh, you should email Campus Health and we'll work with you on a testing, uh, testing schedule. Uh, um, if only vaccinated students and faculty have access to campus in fall 2021, will the mask mandate still be in effect? If so, why? Well, um, as we've seen, we, we're going to have uh, some people with an exemptions and uh, exemption, they will not be vaccinated. And uh, we anticipate that there will may be others who don't have an exemption who are not vaccinated and still have to test twice a week. And so uh, we are going to continue to monitor vaccination rates, uh, case positivity, and other public health factors and information. Um, and we'll be making decisions about um, whether or not to rela relax some of the max mask requirements uh, during the semester. Our university health team is working closely with local and state public health officials to guide our policies and other safety protocols. But our main consideration is keeping everyone safe. And so for now, uh, the mask requirement is indoor mask requirement is still in place. Dr. White, is there a deadline for determining a class or course modality? Can a professor decide at any time during the semester to change the way that course is delivered? Um, what if, how does someone guarantee if they only want in-person classes? Well, uh, we're, we're unable to provide ironclad ironclad guarantees to anything these days. But as the provost mentioned, the vast majority of our classes will be in person. Uh, we've always had online and remote learning activities um, uh, for students, and uh, we've been able to expand those opportunities as we've needed to. But our goal is to serve students on campus in most of our programs. Dr. White, why is SU requiring students and employees to get tested if they are vaccinated? Um, well, the University System of Maryland uh, is requiring everyone uh, to get a return to campus uh, uh, test, but uh, vaccinated students, the, those who have a, um, a consent form in Gullnet so that we know about your vaccina vaccination status, are only gonna to have to get one test as you return to campus. 
and then you're good to go for the rest of 2021. If a student has received their vaccination, has their vaccination card, and does not need to get is fully vaccinated, meaning they don't need another dose of the vaccine, does that student need to fill out the consent form to allow the university to gain access to that information? Yes, yes, yes. The only way that we can get uh, a safe and secure way to find out about your vaccination status is for you to fill out the consent form. Without that, we are forced to assume that you are not vaccinated. And so we want to get that information um, so that we can put you into the group that only has to be tested once. Um, so um, yes, uh, be sure to fill out the consent form in Golnet, um, and then you will only have to be tested once as you return to campus. Dr. White, very similar question. If a student has already received their vaccination or, vac or second dose, will they be required to show their vaccination card at any point on campus in order to gain access to a building or classroom? No, uh, we have a safe and secure process for receiving vaccination information through CRISP. Um, and as long as uh, the student fills out the consent form in Gullnet, uh, that should take care of the process. We are not anticipating uh, looking at anybody's vaccination card uh, as a, a way to gain, it, gain access to campus. And Dr. White, the last question is about uh, classroom capacity. Will classrooms have greater capacity than they did this year? Will we be seeing six feet, three feet, or will they be back to normal capacities in the fall? In the fall, uh, we are planning to run all of our classrooms at full normal density. Uh, the way they were uh, before last fall. So um, uh, we should have normal classroom um, uh, populations and uh, densities. And that's part of the reason why uh, we are maintaining the indoor mask requirement. Thank you, Dr. White. That does it for the questions today. Thank you, Dr. Faust and Dr. Olmsted for joining us uh, today. Everybody, um, please send any uh, remaining questions that you have uh, to stayinformed at salisbury.edu, and we'll look forward to seeing you on campus either this summer or in the fall. Take care, everyone. Be safe.